RJ from Harmony. Um, so recently we uh, have a new design or like an improved design of our system. And we just write, uh, we just wrote a new white paper 2.0. And uh, we're gonna share to, to you guys about the new design. So the white paper is not actually announced yet. So it's like an exclu exclusive preview to the TGI folks. So as you know, Harmony is a sharding-based uh, blockchain, and uh, we have several uh, key improvements or key features for the new design. So first is Harmony is fully sharded blockchain. It means it shard the blockchain state, the validator network, and also um, the transaction processing, which means computing. So compared to other blockchains like Zydeca, we're, sh we're actually sharding more than, than uh, other blockchains. Uh, next, we're uh, proof of stake uh, blockchain, which means you don't do the mining, you, you, you put on stake and then validate for transactions. Our proof of stake is called adaptive threshold as proof of stake, uh, which will adjust the amount of stake you need to put in the right amount so that the network will be kept secure. So uh, the problem of proof of stake is with the big staker, they have more say or they can have more control of the system. Uh, it's especially true in the sharded system. If, if I say I have 20% of the stake, and if all my stake is concentrated in one shard, then can have, I basically can overtake that, that whole shard. Because the, each shard has a very small amount of stake of the whole network. So our proof of stake will adjust it, the amount of uh, uh, stake you need to put in the right amount so it's the, the network is secure. And um, for networks to be secure, we need to randomly shuffle all the stakes into different shards. If you don't run the shuffle, I can easily like uh, join, I can easily put my stake into a specific shard. So malicious attackers can do that to overtake a, a single shard. So what we do is we use this secure random beacon to generate like a fully cryptographically secure random number and use that random number to shuffle or shard all the, all the, all the stakes so that no attacker can possibly like uh, uh, game the system or bias the system to overtake a single shard. And next is we have very efficient and uh, fast consensus algorithm, which is like uh, which is a PVFT based uh, consensus, where all the people vote uh, for uh, for the next block. And if there are more than uh, two thirds of people voting on the same block, the next block is confirmed. And we have some improvement on the existing uh, PVFT algorithm, so that our algorithm is linearly scalable and only need two round trip between all the nodes to reach consensus. So last but not least is the, we have very scalable networking infrastructure, uh, which is a core uh, strength of Harmony. So in a sharded network, all, all of the shards need to communicate with each other and there are a lot of uh, message passing between shards, which is really costly. If every message you send from one shard to another shard is a broadcast, then all the network is flooded. So have this efficient network infrastructure to reduce the network complexity of cross shard communication from like uh, O big O N, which means flooding everyone, to uh, O log N, which means you have f you find a, a like optimal pass from the uh, sender to the receiver. So first, the, the proof of state sharding. We um, you can see us first in here. This all the stakers and their staking amount. After they stake, they get the, uh, the proportional amount of voting shares. We call this voting shares. That voting share is have the price of uh, the exact uh, good amount so that you as a validator cannot concentrate your, uh, to your token to, to stake on a, sing a single shard. So you can see after they get the voting share, those voting shares are randomly distributed to all the shards. So they can see the, the red validator, which is, means malicious. He cannot get uh, more, than two, uh, more than one third of the malicious power in any shards. So it's, it's like its malicious power is randomly like spread up across all the shards and he cannot like attack any shards. So um, that requires this secure randomness. If the randomness is biasable, then the attacker can bias the randomness and make their stake like kind of not truly randomly distributed. And then it's possible that their, their stake is, con is still concentrated. 
So to be uh, so, so for the sharding to be fully secure, we need this uh, distributed randomness generation process. So we come up this uh, new uh, technology to create this um, random beacon, uh, random number that's unpredictable, uh, unbiasable, verifiable, and scalable. So some other projects also uh, try to use randomness. Some basically not is not using the true randomness. Some projects using the hash of the next block, which is obviously biasable because the block proposer can grind or repeatedly generate new blocks so that the hash fits their, in their favor. Uh, so what we do is we use, uh, we combine the uh, cri cryptographic primitives uh, called uh, VRF and VDF. So, so for VRF, it's called a re verifiable random function, which uh, can allow a single node to generate a random, random number that's uh, unbiasable, that's provably secure. Uh, it's because people can verify that that random number is generated correctly by checking their uh, secure key. So in here in our network, all the validators already have their or already have their public key, and uh, which means their their secret key already fixed, so they they cannot like uh, like uh, generate some biased randomness. The the only randomness they can provide is the one which which is generated from the verifiable random random function. So with that is not enough. Uh, so. Usually the distributed random process is working like this. It's like I pull, I pull all the people for you to provide a random number for, for me. And then I group them together to generate the final random number. And this is still uh, not uh, secure because there is a kind of scenario called last revealer, revealer attack, which means a malicious people uh, can wait until all the other people revealing their random number. And then that people, that attacker, can uh, bias the final result by specifically choose a specific random number that will like, uh, affect the final result, right? So what, how we tackle that problem is we use the VDF uh, primitive, which is very new technology. It's called verifiable delay function. So what we use that for is uh, first, we ask all the people to commit their random number into the next block so that nobody can like, uh, regret their choice. The trick is the final random number is not simple aggregation of all the randomness. It's like we're going to apply the verifiable delay function on the, all the random, random number to create the final randomness. The feature of run, uh, verifiable delay function is that it take a specific amount of time and that's provably secure, a provable, cryptographically provable that that function took like five minutes. So with this, we can like um, prevent the attacker to find out the true randomness before they commit their, uh, their like share of randomness. It's like here, first everybody commit their uh, share of the randomness in the, in the current block. And then we apply the VDF on that commitment to generate the true randomness. So you can only see the true randomness after a couple, uh, couple block, which means you can never bias the result uh, before that. So you can never bias your input when you're first committing the random share. So uh, next is the consensus. Our consensus algorithm is um, linearly scalable, and we use the BLS multi-signature to aggregate the signatures together so that we can improve uh, the complexity of the traditional PBFT algorithm from ON square complexity to ON uh, complexity. So last is uh, the networking uh, infrastructure. So we use the technology uh, called fountain code uh, based irregular coding so that we can uh, uh, like encode the block uh, with some like padding and that padding will allow people to reconstruct the original block uh, with only part with only part with only uh, a portion of the encoded data so that this will 
uh, take care of the network uh, kind of uncertainty or network problem. When you're broadcasting uh, like on trusted network, you cannot like uh, expect every message get delivered eventually, right? So with this Ethereum coding, we can have this um, a high probability that our block will be <coughs> delivered. And also with, with uh, very uh, limited uh, network usage, we can achieve that. So we also use Canabla routing to achieve the fast uh, message passing between shards. So Canabla routing means uh, instead of broadcasting the message to everybody, uh, hoping that some node or this destination node will receive my message, I use this routing table. Uh, with that message, can find the optimal path through the P2P network to my destination. So there is. Uh, so it's avoiding the broadcasting overload on the whole network. So that's mostly the core features of the design. And there are more um, small features that's helping uh, Harmony to be fully secure and scalable. Um, something like uh, we use the cuckoo rule based resharding. So the sharding is just one thing, right? After sharding, you, have, you still have to reshuffle the node so that a single shard doesn't get corrupted uh, over time. So we need the resharding of the nodes. So the cuckoo rule based resharding will keep the shards balanced. And um, it's also a non-interactive process, which means the shard can still run consensus when it's doing resharding. Um, another feature is called fast state synchronization. So when you're doing resharding, all the nodes need to go to the other shard, right? and uh, validate for the other shards. To be able to validate for another shard, you have to know the state for the blockchain uh, history to validate new transaction, right? So with, without any uh, organization, it probably take days to sync up to the, to the new block, to the new shard. So with this uh, fast, fast state synchronization, we can achieve this uh, like synchronization within hours which is like feasible for in terms of our uh, design. Uh, another thing is, uh, we call it beacon chain uh, crosslink. Uh, this thing is um, kind of um, a commonly used technology, which Ethereum, the next version of Ethereum, Ethereum 2.0 is also using. So it's like for all the shards uh, to be consistent with each other, we want to use the uh, global beacon chain to record all the hashes of the shard chain so that there is a global ground truth about which shard should have which chain. And also it helps all the shards to communicate with each other because the, globe, because the beacon chain contains most of the metadata about the shard chain um, so that all the other shard chain can be uh, a light client of the of the other of the uh, uh, other shard chain to verify their transactions, um, so that will help uh, the go the network to like scale faster because you don't want every shard to uh, download the other shard's metadata directly. That will cause like a n square complexity. But with the beacon chain cross shard, everybody just refer to the beacon chain for the metadata, and that's just uh, that would just cause like on uh, complexity of uh, message passing. Uh, that's mostly it about new design. And if you uh, want to read more, you can go to this link. It's not announced yet, uh, so it's uh, exclusive to you guys. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Any questions? Uh, two questions. With the resharding, the two good side thing. How frequently do you see? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so it's, it's, it's about resharding. Resharding happens for every epoch. We have a the concept of epoch. Epoch means um, for this couple of times, like say 12 hours, all the shards structure are fixed and uh, all the nodes in the shard are also uh, kind of fixed. They run consensus continuously. And after that 12 hour, all the, not all of them, uh, part, part of the node need to be reshuffled to other shard so that we, we won't have uh, a single shard getting attacked over time. 
So the epoch time is basically uh, the, the thing you ask, like how frequent we shuffle the node. The timing should be decided by the estimation that how long we expect a sing uh, attacker can corrupt a single shard, right? If say they can attack a single shard within like uh, six hour, we better reshuffle the shards before six hour happens, right? So we better set it three hour, four hour. So it's really uh, like a guesstimate. Um, so we, we haven't decided the, the, re the final uh, number for the epoch time. So we, we, need to, we need to do more research or experiment about this, but uh, that's a good question. Cool. Yeah. Um, so can you, can you go back to the, like, the previous slide where you have different verifiers um, and you group different verifiers into um, oh, different okay. shards? Okay. Yeah. Um, so basically my understanding here is that the one validator can be the validator in different shards, right? So yeah. for example, the uh, orange validator can have has been participating in all the five shards yeah, exactly. versus the, the, the blue one is only in the last shard. Yeah, exactly. Got it, got it. And um, um, so in the in the next few slides, there is a slide when you talk about the uh, reshard. Um, uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned something the like the beacon chain, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you set up the beacon chain? Is the beacon chain part of the main chain or it's you know separate from the main chain and being an independent yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a good question. Um, so in our design, beacon chain is theoretically the same as the other shard chain. So when we're doing the, all the sharding, resharding, beacon chain is just part of it. Mm -hmm. It's part of the shards. But beacon chain, since it has more functionalities or responsibilities, we want to make it more secure so we can put more stake in there. So. Uh, so for, for people to attack them, they need more stake. So, so it's more secure for Beacon Chain. So can I understand that Beacon Chain is like a first party shard? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's there forever? Exactly. Uh, every chain should stay there forever. <laughs> right. I see. Yeah, I but see. Uh, Beacon Chain is more secure. And how do you reach the finality uh, with each other shard? Um, like when the shard is closed, um, how do you, you know, make sure Whatever is validated from the shard is mm -hmm. final. How do you reach that finality? Oh, uh, yeah. Since we're using the PBFT uh, consensus, uh -huh. PBFT doesn't have fork. Right. It's not like proof of work or Ethereum's proof of work. There are right. a lot of forks. You have to choose which fork is the like canonical version. Right. PBFT doesn't have this problem, so we have it imme immediately uh, uh, finality. Uh, I see. And also the cross cross link to the uh, beacon chain as a further guarantee that only a unique version of the shard exists. I see. Okay, okay, All right, thanks.